So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Kim Knight here from Kim Knight Health and here we are for our weekly webinar. And today what we're going to be looking at is how to stop being hard on ourselves and three steps to stopping the cycle of self-abuse. What happens is when we grow up feeling loved, cherished, validated, respected, all good stuff, we naturally grow high self-esteem, good self-worth, self-confidence, self-respect, all the good stuff because it's modeled to us and that's the way that we think we should be and and more than that we we just in it is, it is infused into us because it's modeled to us and it feels good as well it feels good and right and so we naturally feel loved cherished validated etc and then we turn that towards ourselves and we naturally automatically unconsciously love ourselves, cherish ourselves, value ourselves. And then we go out into the world and we give that to other people. And of course, this is what we want, right? This is what we want. But unfortunately, if we grow up being abused, neglected or rejected or punished or lots of negative stuff, lots of unpleasant experiences, we we come to feel unconsciously that that is the way to be, that is the way to behave. And if we don't want to do that to other people, you know, some people will go out and do that to other people. If we don't do that, then we will do it towards ourselves. And ultimately, it's because deep, deep down, because of this initial experience that we had in our life, we come to believe that we're unworthy, we're unworthy of all the good stuff, and therefore we must be deserving of all, of all the bad stuff, and so we turn it on ourselves. And it is very, very damaging. It is damaging emotionally, it is damaging to our mind, and it is ultimately damaging to our physical body. And if we do all this sort of stuff, as in turn this abuse and neglect onto ourselves, we have a very high likelihood of becoming ill. And I know this because I'm working with this all the time, and it was my own experience. So to briefly introduce myself, if this is the first time you're watching one of my webinars, I had clinical depression and chronic fatigue and was unable to work for a period of over 10 years, during which time I lost everything. I lost my savings, my house, my car, my job, everything. And so I had to work out, or I chose to work out, uh, you know, what is it that really caused this illness, my inability to hold on to my finances, and digging deep over a number of years, I really discovered that there was this connection between what had happened in my early childhood and how I felt about that and how it affected me and how it then uh, resulted in me creating a lot of negative self-beliefs, self-damaging behaviors, not looking after myself, pushing myself too much, and ultimately ending up with chronic illness. So we have to learn how to reverse all this. So if we grow up with positive affirmation, in other words, people are being positive to us, about us, around us, then we are naturally going to create self-love, self-value, self-esteem, or, or good self-value and good self-esteem, good positive self-belief, self-confidence, and self-referral, which means that we trust ourselves and we refer to ourselves for answers rather than seeking approval outside. We're going to be self-caring and self-nurturing towards ourselves, and we're going to be kind to ourselves and to others. We are going to experience inside of us feeling loved, safe, supported, we're going to be kind to ourselves, we're going to be generous to ourselves, we're going to experience trust, we're going to experience courage, respect, gentleness, all this positive stuff that often we're seeking from other people, but until we can give it to ourselves, we're not actually going to attract the sort of people that are going to give it to us, because life is a mirror, and whatever is unresolved inside of us is going to show up on the outside in our life. So we have to give it to ourselves first. But 
we can't give ourselves what we weren't given, right? Uh, not, not until we learn how to give it to ourselves. And also, if we, if we grow up in this positive environment, then we're also going to experience or have a much higher likelihood of experience success, abundance, being on track in our life, following our purpose, fulfilling our mission. So very, very often, it's very common when I work with people who are ill or chronically unhappy, is that they don't know what they're here to do, they don't know what their purpose is, their mission is, they feel very lost. And that is because there's all this other stuff in the way that needs to be cleared. And this is the stuff that we need to clear. If we grow up with a lot of negative affirmation around us, a lot of negative energy, negative vibes, uh, unfair treatment, lack of love, etc., it will lead to a lack of self-love. It will lead to low self-value, low self-esteem, low self-belief, lack of self-confidence always seeking approval from others because deep down we just don't feel good enough inside. We'll then turn that harshness on ourselves and also outward sometimes to others. But to start with, it's always towards ourselves. And so we'll self-neglect, we'll maybe even self-harm. And that self-harm could be mental just in terms of the thoughts that we tell ourselves over and over again without even realizing we're doing it. Or it could be serious physical self-harm, where, for example, people cut themselves. That is a form of self-abuse which comes from deep feelings of not feeling good enough, not feeling loved. Other forms of self-harm will be, for example, overeating or drinking or smoking or not, not having good self-care regime. There are many, many ways to self-harm. We're also likely to experience a lot of what we call negative, uncomfortable, unpleasant emotions such as anger, frustration, resentment, sadness, hurt. And these will build up to anxiety and depression. And we'll also sabotage our success. Uh, we'll have financial issues. We'll always or never have money. We'll feel a lack of purpose and a lack of meaning in life. So we get... We end up getting what we don't want, and it's all because deep, deep down, we have these deep feelings of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving. And if these beliefs are sitting in the unconscious and remembering that our unconscious is much more powerful than our conscious mind, it's 95% of our mind, if we have a deep belief of I'm unworthy, then we cannot create what we think we might be worthy of because deep down, we don't feel worthy of it. So we're going to create what is sitting in our unconscious at an unconscious level, not necessarily what we want consciously. And that, by the way, is why positive affirmations don't necessarily work, because if we go around telling ourselves, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm rich, I'm rich, if deep down we have a, a contradictory belief, that belief will be much more powerful and we will constantly sabotage ourselves from creating what we want. So here are some typical childhood experiences that tend to lead to this pattern of self-harm, self-abuse, self-neglect. Often we may have been, we may have grown up in, in an environment where we were constantly living in fear. We were afraid maybe of being punished, being criticized, being judged, being abused. There could be many things that we we're afraid of, but if our if our uh, if our stress response is constantly switched on and we're constantly living in fear of the next bomb that's going to drop, that is a very stressful place to be uh, and it creates a lot of emotions to be stored inside the body and not just fear will hold frustration, sadness, hurt, disappointment, loneliness, lots of emotions and emotional energy will be trapped inside the body. And when we have a truckload of emotional energy trapped inside our body, that will rewire the cells into a state of dis-ease. We may have experienced physical, emotional or sexual abuse. These are very, very common parameters for later in life leading to self-harm and self-abuse. Maybe our parents or caregivers were constantly fighting or arguing. Maybe we witnessed them abusing each other. And that, again, creates a deep fear inside of us. And then what happens is children tend to make it their fault. 
They don't want to make their parents uh, at fault because their parents are responsible for keeping them alive and somehow we make it our fault. This is very, very common and that then goes on to create a lot of guilt as well. Uh, but it's false guilt. So you might want to check out my video on the difference between true, true guilt and false guilt. And often if we've been bullied at school, at home, family, siblings, parents, teachers, uh, that will later on in life, it will, it will lead us to, to hold everything inside, to turn it all on ourselves. And that leads to this self-neglect and self-harm. So here are some signs of being hard on ourselves. Constant negative thinking, critical thinking towards ourselves and other people, worrying or overthinking, putting ourselves down and beating ourselves up mentally, negative self-talk, pessimism, comparing ourselves with others and always making ourselves worse. Self-hatred, self-loathing, self-rejection, although this the self-hatred, self-loathing, self-rejection, some of it may be obvious, but a lot of it may actually not even be obvious, but it's going on uh, nevertheless underneath. We may feel guilt, envy, jealousy. These are the, the sort of things that are going to go on in our mind if we've had this sort of upbringing. We may push ourselves too hard and overwork. Uh, always pushing, 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 and if things are never good enough, we can never do good enough. We may always do for others and not for ourselves. We will ignore our own needs. Uh, if, if our body says it's hungry, we'll ignore it. If, if we need to go to the toilet, we'll ignore it. If we're working really, really hard and we're exhausted, we'll ignore it. We'll just push through, uh, even though the body is saying, I need a rest. We'll ignore our feelings. We may not even be conscious of how we're feeling. We won't even feel the sadness, the pain, the hurt, the frustration. We may not have enough fun. Um, we, we just don't feel like we have permission to be happy. And, again, and we'll have what is called a glass ceiling of happiness, where even though consciously we think we want to feel more happy, we just won't allow ourselves to go there. We won't have enough relaxation. We won't take enough breaks. We won't take enough time out. We won't maybe go on holiday. We're just everything is always for somebody else or something else, and we're always last on our list. We will justify why we can't speak our truth or be authentic or put ourselves first. There's always a reason why somebody else is right, why we can't do what we want, why we shouldn't say what we feel. There's always a reason, a justification. We'll find it difficult asking for support or help, and we will try to do everything ourselves because we don't feel worthy of asking for support or help. And we'll end up being a perfectionist. Uh, nothing is ever good enough. We're never good enough. And everything ends up being totally exhausting mentally and physically. So, Signs of loving oneself, because we have to start turning this around, is that we have good daily self-care routines. We put ourselves first. We make ourselves our priority. We're very tuned into our body intelligence. We're tuned into our heart brain and our gut brain and the feedback that our heart and gut brains are sending us. And you can check out my video on the three brains for that. So we're very tuned into the feedback, the internal feedback that our body is automatically giving us about, is this the right thing for me to do or is it not the right thing for me to do? This is all about what is right for me. And putting ourselves first is not being selfish. We cannot give to others until we fill our cup up first. We need to fill our own cup up. It flows over and we give the overflow to other people. And that is healthy. We have good work-life balance. We have good time management. We're very tuned into our body, into, you know, how much is a good amount of time for me to be working each day? What is the right amount of time for me to take breaks each day? How much time do I need for fun and relaxation and rest? And how much time do I need for work? We're very tuned into our body and, and knowing what's right for us. We'll eat well. And we'll exercise appropriately. We won't be emotionally eating. We won't be eating junk food and, and food that damages us. 
because we just won't want to anymore and that will be quite automatic. We will exercise appropriately. We will know what our exercise needs are. We will know what our exercise limits are. We won't be pushing ourselves too, too much, too hard. We'll have a good mix of work and fun and rest and play. We'll be able to rest and take time out without feeling guilty. We'll be able to accept compliments from others and we'll be able to receive from others, whether that's love, money, support. We'll be able to receive. And we'll be able to value ourselves and know that we are of value and that we are of value without doing anything. We are just okay. So these are signs of loving ourselves. We will also believe in ourselves and trust ourselves. We will feel a sense of peace inside. We will feel happy and relaxed and positive and calm and optimistic. So we will feel optimistic rather than pessimistic, which is a sign of the, the, the other side of the coin. We will feel good enough, pretty enough. We will be happy with our body. We will have high self-acceptance. We will experience gratitude for what is going on in our life. Even if things aren't 100% good, we will experience gratitude. And we will see the gift in those things that aren't so good. And we will feel on purpose. We will feel successful, abundant, supported. We will feel positive stuff in our life rather than lots of negative stuff. So here are three steps to loving ourselves a little more. First of all, we have to have awareness of how things are and to the fact that we are beating ourselves up, putting ourselves down, being hard on ourselves, and that we have this pattern of self-abuse, self-neglect, self-harm, etc. First of all, we have to have the awareness because if we've been doing this our whole life, it has become normal for us. We, we just don't know, or we haven't maybe even questioned that it could be different. It's just normal for us. And actually, it's not normal. So we have to become aware that there is something different, that there's a different option. Then we have to make changes. We have to stop or start stopping the, the uh, unhealthy behaviours of the self-neglect, the self-abuse, etc., etc., and we have to start replacing those old unhealthy behaviours with new healthy behaviours, such as the self-love, the self-nurturing, etc., etc. And in order to do that, often we're also going to have to do some healing. We're going to have to heal this trauma from the past, these emotional energies that are trapped in our body that are holding these behaviors in place in the first place because our behaviors stem from our limiting beliefs which stem from the trapped emotional energy which is stored inside the body so we're going to have to do some healing so let's look at these one by one self-awareness we have to become aware of our self-defeating self-harming habits and we can literally start to make a list. For example, I eat McDonald's every day for breakfast, or I drink 10, 10, 10 cups of coffee every day before breakfast, or I never go outside in the fresh air. We have to become aware, and we can do that by just taking a very uh, non-judgmental inventory of what are my daily habits. And we look at the habits that we have on a daily basis uh, in a practical way, but also we have to start becoming aware of our mind habits. And mind habits are a lot more difficult to notice. Now, for example, I was playing tennis the other day and I only started playing again after a gap of about 30 years. And I noticed that as, as I was playing, that when I missed a shot or I did a, a bad shot, I would immediately say to myself, oh, that's so stupid, or you're stupid. Now, that is an old habit, and it was showing its face again uh, out of the unconscious because I trained myself into that habit many years ago. And so basically, when I was playing tennis all those years ago, I would be constantly telling myself if I ever missed a shot that I was stupid, right? Now, that is a mind habit, but I didn't notice it before. Now I notice it. So as soon as I notice it, I stop it. I turn it around. I apologize to myself. 
I tell myself I'm not stupid, actually, I'm very intelligent. So we have to become aware of these mind habits, and that takes quite a bit of work. And we also have to be open to the reality that we may not be as aware of ourselves as we thought we were. Now, the interesting thing about consciousness is that whatever our level of self-awareness is at any given point in our life, we tend to think that that is 100% of our consciousness. But actually, it may only be 5%, 3%, 10%, which means that <clears throat> another 90-odd percent is literally unconscious. So we're not aware of what we're not aware of. And this is a very tricky thing about awareness. We're not aware of what we're not aware of. So how do we become aware? Well, we set an intention. We set an intention that I'm willing to be more aware and to become more aware of myself. And that starts the ball rolling. The second thing is change. We have to change old habits. We have to change these self-harming negative habits and bring in more positive, self-loving, self-nurturing habits. And that can be done in a very, very practical way. And it has to be done in a very practical way. So, for example, if I'm drinking 10, 20 cups of coffee before 11 o'clock in the morning, I start reducing that. Or if I'm eating McDonald's every morning for breakfast, well, I start replacing that with a green smoothie. These are all very, very practical habits that we have the power to change. Now, the thing that is often going to stop that change happening because our conscious mind can say, yes, I'm going to replace that McDonald's with, with a green smoothie, is that if there is all this trauma and emotional energy still trapped inside of us and these unconscious beliefs in our unconscious, they tend to sabotage our desire to change until the desire to change gets so strong that we just decide that we're going to do whatever it takes to change. And even then, we can still have some self-sabotage. So on the one hand, we have to have this intention to start making these changes, and we do have to start making them, but we then have to come to the healing part as well, which I'll come to in a minute. The two go hand in hand. And the more we do the healing, actually, the easier we're going to find it to change. And the more we do the healing, the more we find that the change becomes automatic and natural. And we don't even have to force ourselves to change. We just naturally want to do things differently. But on a change level, we need to start to believe that we can have what we want and that we have permission to fulfill our dreams and be happy in our life. And we have to start taking steps towards the life that we want and away from the life that we don't want anymore. And we definitely have to bring in new habits of self-care and self-kindness. And there are many ways to do that. That's not the scope of this, uh, this webinar to explain them. There are just so many ways to do that. You can go out and research ways to do that. And it's what I teach my clients to do. We work out exactly, you know, what is it that you need to do to create more uh, self-care and self-nurturing for yourself. And the third thing is we need to heal. We need to heal what needs to be healed. Uh, we need to heal this trauma from the past. We need to clear out the emotional energy that's still trapped inside our body, emotional energy of hurt, disappointment, grief, sadness, frustration, betrayal, shame, guilt, all these emotions, they need to be cleared out of the body. And again, there are many different emotional healing techniques on the market. You can go and find what works for you. I have my own set of techniques that I teach clients and, and I have in my online programs. But we must clear this emotional energy out of our body. Because when we have negative emotions in our body, they're like clouds. And they cover the sun so that we never see the bright blue sky. So if you imagine you have a blue sky and the sun, but it's completely covered by clouds and all you see is the clouds. So the, this negative emotional energy is like the clouds, clouds of anger, frustration, sadness, grief, envy, jealousy, guilt. As we clear these clouds of energy away, what we find behind the clouds is what was already there, but we've just not been able to experience it as much as we want it. And what we're going to find is all what we call the positive virtuous energies or emotions of kindness, gentleness, trust, 
love, respect, courage. We're going to find all the positive stuff that we've been wanting to feel, but we couldn't because the clouds were in the way. So this is the purpose of clearing this emotional energy. So we clear this trauma that's been stored in the cells, and then we also have to forgive ourselves. And once we've forgiven ourselves, we then are able to forgive others. It's very hard to forgive others until we've actually done the healing work on ourselves first. So we have to learn how to forgive ourselves and be much kinder and more gentler and self-compassionate to ourselves. And again, this takes training. Often we need help, uh, but, but it's something that we need to do. So to recap, the three steps, or not only the only three steps, but three key steps to loving ourselves more, we need more self-awareness. We have to grow our self-awareness of how things are and how we want them to change. We have to start making that change in a very, very practical way. We've got to start changing these unhealthy habits into new, healthy, self-care, self-nurturing habits. And then we have to heal. We have to heal what's still stored in our body from the past. And really, this is the art of self-love. We have to learn to love ourselves because most people spend most of their life seeking love outside of themselves. But actually, the only person that can truly love us is ourselves. And the more we love ourselves, the more we're going to attract other people into our life who will love and respect us. But if we don't love ourselves and we don't respect ourselves, then we're going to, just through the law of attraction, we're going to attract people into our life who don't treat us well, who walk all over us, who treat us badly, who abuse or bully us. It's the law of attraction. And the way to clear it is to change our inner energy, to clear old energy out of our body, out of ourselves, so that our whole energy matrix changes our vibration changes, and then through the law of attraction, we attract different people and situations into our life. So if you want to find out more, please go to my website, kimnighthealth.com. I have a blog with lots of articles. I have a YouTube channel where this video will be with lots of videos have online programs, welcome to browse and find what's right for you. I do encourage you to test to check out some of my free online programs, for example, the five levels of healthcare, which explains the different levels of healthcare that are available to us, but most people are only aware of level one. But actually there are five levels and even more than that, but I've only put five levels in that particular program. So I do um, encourage you to check these programs out. So thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.